only love for the tribe you guys are so amazing all those comments that you have been putting in and making sure that the algorithm picks up our videos well it really seems to be working so many of you coming in and commenting and letting me know that youtube has been recommending wax videos after a very long time i also really quickly want to let you guys know about my different memberships i have my youtube membership which starts at 75 rupees only as well as my patreon and on my patreon not only do i share some really funny behind the scenes moments and give you some really cool articles to read but once every two months i also do a pretty cozy intimate hangout it's like sitting with a friend having a cup of coffee discussing life as well as future whack episodes this offer is also available on my youtube membership so in today's episode unfortunately or fortunately there are two lies the first lie is I'm not going to give you five recommendations. I'm going to give you nine. Wow. The five shows that we are talking about. Ta-da! This is them. If you feel like you've seen any of these shows, then you can always go and check out the timestamp and jump to a show that sounds new to you. The other four, I'm going to drop them at any point in this episode. So I guess you'll just have to watch the whole episode. I'm not even going to put timestamps for it. Unless one of you goes down in the comment section and writes, "The other four are here at this time." My name is Prishya. This is Wack, and together we are going to discover some binge-worthy, awesome shows that also taught me something in life. Midnight Diner Tokyo Stories. My love for Japan. I think it's pretty obvious with all these different episodes that I have done on it. This particular TV show, it is based on a small diner in the Shinjuku district of Tokyo, and the main protagonist, who is this scarred chef, who mysteriously is just known as the master. There are five seasons of Midnight Diner Tokyo Stories, which makes me think that if a show has had so many seasons, then there definitely must be something really special about it. Master was a happy person. He's so happy to be surrounded by such good people. Today, I'm going to be a good one. It's a collection of standalone stories that are threaded together by one location as well as a few central characters. There's all these quirky protagonists that slide in through the snug door of this bar and cafe who come in and share their life stories and their problems. Nothing about the show is over the top. The dialogue, the humor, the situations, everything. It's so nice and easy. And if you like the Japanese aesthetic, then you definitely will like this show. The one big bonus thing about this show is that in every episode during the end credits, they show you how to make one Japanese dish. It's very simple, it's very easy, and it almost makes you want to run into the kitchen the next day and probably even try a few of these. The fact that I started my list of recommendations with this particular show, I think says a lot about it. You gonna tell your mom? Being gay isn't something black people love to talk about. I fell in love with Aziz Ansari when I first saw him in Parks and Recreation. <laughs> and i'm sure this is a show that you have already seen in this show aziz plays the role of dev a struggling actor from new york and he's struggling at many levels a lot of the stories are loosely based on aziz's real life experiences but what i really love that is so real in the show is that his parents are actually acting as his parents in the show iron man movies are very good the guy is strong and funny too in this show there is this one scene where aziz has just dropped this girl off and now he's sitting in a taxi and he's traveling and that's it he's sitting in a taxi and traveling home and this scene it just goes on for like 2 to 3 minutes and nothing happens and yet it is so compelling and so poignant that you just can't look away And for me I think that this is one of the best ways to describe this show. You have to watch it to understand what I am saying. This show it's just funny, it's awkward, it's genius and definitely Aziz is going to be remembered as one of the greats just because of this show. The second most important thing about this show is that Aziz has managed to take every stereotype 
and break it. This show has won multiple awards. It's critically acclaimed and loved by audiences. It was an American show made for American audiences. And yet, Aziz had the balls to take the white male character and make him into the slob who's good for nothing. He's taken the black female character and made her the alpha of the friend circle. She's unapologetically lesbian and very successful. He's taken the Southeast Asian character and made him the fittest, the sexiest and the best dressed of all. Master of None has three seasons. I've seen season one and season two. I still have to check out season three. But the first two seasons were definitely worth it. All the shows that I have recommended till now, they have some humor in them. But Derry Girls, it's an all-out comedy show. I have to admit the Irish accent, it's a little difficult to catch on at first. And I watched the first two episodes with the subtitles. But slowly, your ear starts getting used to it. Sometimes a dark situation can also be the background for a great comedy. And Derry Girls is a brilliant example of just that. It's set in the town of Derry, which was one of the worst affected during the Irish unrest, which was taking place in the 90s. The British against the IRA. And in the midst of all this political chaos, you have this gang of girls who are going about their normal life. Engaging in teenage antics, falling in love, hanging out, and basically just being girls. This is a laugh out comedy and there definitely is something for everyone. And all you 90s kids out there, the soundtrack is truly amazing. Be serious, just do whatever he says and don't flirt with him. I'm not going to... Ah, oh, fucking hell, okay. The good thing about a lot of British shows is that no matter how successful the show is, they will end it exactly when they had planned to end it. Unlike a lot of American and Indian shows that will just go on and on and on for years. If I were to ask some writers from Bombay, from the TV and film industry, who their inspiration for this year is, I wouldn't be surprised if the name Phoebe Waller-Bridge comes up. This is a show that she has not only written, but she also acts in it. And like Aziz in Master of None, she has won a lot of awards and accolades for this show, as well as her performance. She's managed to take a character that is terribly flawed and someone who should be unlikable. And yet, she's managed to win our hearts with her. This is a British comedy, so don't expect to see anything like Two and a Half Men or Big Bang Theory. There are moments in this show that are knuckle-biting awkward and they'll have you cringing and yet laughing. And if you do start this show, you will binge through. And the way that this show ends, I promise you, it is one of the best endings that I have ever seen. This show originally was written as a play and it won so many awards that it got greenlit to become an entire series. Also, the way that she suddenly breaks the fourth wall and she starts talking to the audience, it is a class act in itself. <laughs> That's quite rare, yeah. <laughs> I hate myself. If you do manage to watch this show, then please will you come back into the comment section and let me know how much you enjoyed it. At this point, I'm going to tell you about those four bonus shows that I was talking about. This is the list. I'm not going to get into the details about each and every show. But if you do like dry humor and comedy and something that is very intellectual, then you can do your own research and maybe check these out. Who knows, maybe one day I'll even make an entire episode on them. Call My Agent is a French show that is so successful that not only is it five seasons in, but they're also making a movie on it and there's going to be an Indian version very, very soon. This is a show that is truly binge-worthy. I did two seasons back to back during the lockdown. It's the show that gives you an insight into what truly happens behind the scenes in the film industry. These are agents and their helpful assistants, beautiful characters that have been very funnily drawn out. I particularly loved Harvey and the kind of graph that his character takes through the show. What I loved about this show is how it gives you an insight into how things work in the West, how stars and actors are managed 
and it's very different from how it works here in India. Although I have to say that the scene over here in our current film industry is definitely changing and evolving. My name is Freesia, this is WAC and I truly hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I'm looking forward to your comments as well as your suggestions. Why don't you let the tribe know about some binge-worthy shows that you have discovered recently. I'll catch you again very soon. Ciao!